Hey everyone, welcome back to this third episode of the Post-Apocalyptic Media Podcast. That's a mouthful. And my name is Sean, and once again I'm joined by that guy right there, Derek. Howdy. And uh, Stephanie, how you doing? Hey. All right. So we have this third podcast. Look at us. We're we you know we've tripled our number of podcasts in the last couple of weeks. It's <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and we have some good topics this week. Some things we wanted to talk about that maybe we didn't even get to write about on the sh- on the the website itself yet. So we're going to talk about here on the show. But before we do that, Derek, you had an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we're holding it together pretty well. But to be honest, we're pretty mad at one uh-huh. another. Because, um, frankly, these two have the wrong opinions um, about post-apocalyptic TV. And we just, we need to air it. It needs to be said. Uh So, uh, we recently put out our own top five best post-apocalyptic TV shows of all time. And, uh, to my surprise, uh, their lists were not identical to mine. And I can only chalk that up to lack of taste <laughs> and, um, and, and, uh, no, that's it. That's, that's my only, <laughs> uh, theory going right now for, for why we have different top spots. So Sean, what was your number one TV series of all time? Uh, well, mine was Firefly. Yeah. Okay. So now I have to defend Firefly. Yeah. To yeah, the death. <laughs> What, well, first of all, first of all, uh, Firefly had how many seasons? Um, well, um, we'll just say one. <laughs> <laughs> one season and, and a, a movie. movie and a movie. And, a movie. <laughs> and and frankly, the movie was great. I um, yeah, yeah. If, if you were defending the movie, then this would be a different kind of a, a situation. But that <laughs> TV series had Nathan Fillion. It had. Uh, the girl from Deadpool. <laughs> I should know her name. The girl from Deadpool and Homeland and a dozen other things. Uh, and, and Alan Tudyk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It had <laughs> such a such a stacked cast. Yeah. Yeah. But it didn't make it past season one. Yeah. Ouch. What's that about? That is a sign of a good. That, that's a sign of a show that's ahead of its time. I think that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> way ahead of its time (laughs) well i think the biggest thing for putting this for number one for me is that i think a lot of people don't think it's post-apocalyptic um because they it's basically a space opera you know not in the sense of like star wars but you know what i mean and so i think um it might be arguable that it's post-apocalyptic but here's the thing in if you watch the reruns they put in there they have a voiceover and um, they usually say something about how the earth was all used up. And so to me, when they mention it, it's like the intro to each episode. They say the earth was all used up. And I think that that in itself kind of explains a post-apocalypse, you know. Hmm. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> hmm, okay. <laughs> that, <laughs> so okay. humanity has used up all the resources of the earth but has 12 thriving colonies on other planets. Is that post-apocalyptic? Yes, it still is. No. (laughs) (laughs) That is simply, I mean, come on, like we have that. We have that on Earth in a smaller way. Right now, Uh we could say, um, what's a a place of the Earth that we've just mined and, uh, you know. There are uh, places. Yeah, I mean, the rainforests. Yeah. True. Yeah. 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 I remember the rainforest when we yeah. had them. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> our grandkids. Yeah. It's a joke. That's a joke our grandkids won't get. <laughs> They'll be like, what? <laughs> what's, a, what's a forest? Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> so sad. <laughs> I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> but like, you know, there are parts that are that are used up, uninhabitable. I mean, let, let's just say wherever we've tested a nuke. Nobody mm-hmm. can go there for 10,000 years or something, you know, ridiculous. Yeah. So, um, well, we Chernobyl. just did it underwater, so it's fine, right? Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> until, the, <laughs> until the dolphins start building weapons, we're not, yeah. not a threat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, which yeah, yeah, I I will be terrified when the Dolphins do start building the weapons. But we're getting we're getting into the weeds. The the point is is uh-huh. so long as we have, uh, I you know like we can use up a planet in the same way we can use up a spot of land and it's but but to be fair i'm not arguing that firefly isn't post-apocalyptic i actually believe it is okay but, that could be a whole show on its own but, <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but but not based on the theory here's the thing in firefly you have um essentially a zombie horde that is like yeah. halfway done i guess in the movie i think it was halfway done like assimilating the galaxy so it was like very close to being post-apocalypse and was very much in the middle mid-apocalypse mm-hmm. yeah i could see that i mean it's 500 years in the future um just think of what we did in this year alone you know <laughs> the, the craziness of this year so we 500 oh more gosh. of those yeah <laughs> Yeah, humanity. Uh, hopefully we don't have 500 more 2020s, though. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awful. 2020 has been uh, has made me question the uh, fabric of my reality. The <laughs> are whole, we in a simulation? Yeah, Maybe. Or, yeah. Are we already in an afterlife in which like we're all being punished? <laughs> Could be. Maybe. It's starting to sound a little more believable now. <laughs> yeah, every time new there's new news, I'm like, mm, mm-hmm, it's a game. Yeah. Um, okay, so so Sean uh, Firefly clearly lost his his argument. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, Wait, I see how this is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll see if Stephanie loses her argument. Oh wow, I wonder. <laughs> I have this feeling I might. Yeah, good luck, Stephanie. <laughs> what's your, what's your top show of all time? My top show is Battlestar Galactica, and there's really no arguing that one. It is the top post-apocalyptic TV series of all time, obviously. You know, it had um, four seasons that were all amazing, except for the very last episode. Just rubbing it, those seasons in Sean's face, aren't you? That's <laughs> right. Rubbing in those seasons. <laughs> and it, um, I mean, it was intense, right? It really captured the feeling of trying to survive in what feels like an absolutely hopeless situation. And then... Um, On top of that, it has a lot of, um, there's mythology, there's military action, there's political intrigue. I mean, they pretty much check. (laughs) There are no plot holes. Well, okay, there's like one or two. Even the biggest advocate admits there are severe plot holes. They don't become plot holes until the very last episode when you realize, well, okay, but, when, um, when they've run out of time to explain away your plot that's holes. That's why I'm saying that's... that the whole thing is amazing <laughs> except for the very last episode. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, just enjoy the ride. Understand the finale is subpar, but it's still the best apo- post-apocalyptic series ever. So there you go. It's hmm. very high quality, high quality acting, high quality layered writing and dialogue with three-dimensional characters it's amazing it holds up to the test of time um it's great and it's even spawning a new series a spinoff that we talked about in the in previous podcast so wow that's my that's my sales pitch you know i haven't even watched it but it has (laughs) edward james almost in it yeah so that right there that's I I concede. That's oh my gosh! <laughs> I was Look depending on you, Sean, to put up a good front. <laughs> Look at that! Look at that! Okay, Derek. <laughs> well, well, um, you know what? To be an all-time great series, I think you've mm-hmm. got to end strong, and never has that been gonna... more plain than with Game of Thrones recently. Oh my gosh. I went from being the biggest Game of Thrones enthusiast, reading theories all day online. I, I wasted so much time reading theories, formulating th- theories, uh, 
these grandiose ideas of how it was all going to be wrapped up and take all of these loose ends that George R. R. Martin has been leaving for us and weave them into a beautiful ending. And then, and then, and now I watched, I watched every single episode of the first four seasons four times each. Huh. Uh, after that, I think I, I watched each episode about once on average and I don't have any t- intention of going back through it because yeah. a bad ending can ruin the whole batch. I mean, that's true, especially when the entire season pretty much is bad, like Game of Thrones. I mean, I remember reporting on it for a couple seasons for Heavy, and most of the time people were talking about how amazing it was. But then for the final season, all the articles that people were interested in were about how awful it was. It was so everyone could feel miserable together and know they weren't alone. Wait, yeah. that happens on the Internet? I know, weird, wow. right? It's so it's so crazy. <laughs> I don't understand. Uh. So so tying that back into uh, why Battlestar Galactica falls short mm. is the final episode of the show. If there is a message to be taken from that episode, <laughs> from the way they they wrap it all up, the big takeaway that they wanted us to take is technology bad. That and, was unfortunate, and it's true. I can't argue. And how can they, that be your message when you're yeah. a sci-fi? None yeah. of the people watching your show are going to agree with that premise. We mm. all love technology. That's why we're interested in the topic, and you're going to come at us with that as a final message of <sighs> skewed And a skew there technology. were some character decisions that were questionable that didn't really fit with the characters previously every episode leading up to the finale, which, you know, and and we saw that happen with Game of Thrones too in their final season with some character decisions that really didn't fit their arc. And yeah, but I mean, it was still amazing, you know, aside from that last episode, I I would say it's still worth the ride, even knowing you're going to be disappointed at the end. Yeah. You know, but at least it was just the final episode and not like, you know, Okay. Okay. Well, That's it sounds argument. like I've almost convinced you to <laughs> denounce well, Battlestar. I'm, I'm sitting here also wondering, like, if The Walking Dead is going to stick their landing or not, and how interesting that's going to be when season 11 comes to an end. You know, like, mm-hmm. how is that going to rank among how these other apocalyptic shows have ended? So I think, I think that's going to be interesting to watch. All right. So we have covered two shows that are were good uh admittedly great firefly and battlestar galactica great shows i'm i'm, I'm actually I'm, I'm admitting they're great shows <laughs> thank <Whoa>. you Terry. <laughs> but when we we need to look at the all-time great <laughs> stephanie can, and i are going to join up to to beat you down on this one you know that right (laughs) look i'm just a a truth seeker and a truth teller and if if that offends Uh you then then let it be but i have to say the grand master entertainer (laughs) probably uh, probably of all time but let's just say of our generation steven spielberg steven spielberg is amazing i can't argue with that he made a post-apocalyptic TV series. It lasted four seasons, I believe. It was strong start to finish. It had a satisfying ending. It is called Falling Skies. Wait, I thought you said it was a post-apocalyptic. That's an alien show. Well, is it? <laughs> of course. Like, wait, wait. Are you saying, are you trying to, trying to tell me that alien shows can't be post-apocalyptic? Um, they could, if the original apocalypse was the the apocalypse, if, okay, (laughs) where is the apocalypse happening? (laughs) Uh, On earth. On earth. Okay. And what, what year is this? I didn't, I watched the first episode of this, so I'm, I'm being devil's advocate right now. (laughs) I didn't see the whole thing. (laughs) Which completely near future (laughs) earth. Okay. Okay, so it's it, they don't they don't really say so it's near future, but they show uh, the first episode they the everything has happened already, right? Right. Okay. Okay. Right. So it's, the war with the aliens okay. has basically concluded, 
with humanity having lost the war. Okay. But it has aliens. In it. Okay, go ahead. But it has aliens. Okay, <laughs> it yes. Does. Yes. It now does like have aliens. you know, I have like on my top movies I have Ender's Game, which is more questionable. Like Starship Troopers, mm. Ender's Game, where you're not really sure if it's the aliens or the humans who are going to win. That is yeah. questionable. Um Halo's a little closer because, uh, you know, if you know the Halo story, you know that humanity is really, really sucking air. They're they're about to they're about to fall over and die, and um, <laughs> so that's a little closer. Even closer, I would say, is fa- Falling Skies because in Falling Skies, humanity doesn't have a super soldier uh, with exoskeleton yeah. armor that is that is kicking alien ass. We have a small group, a, a band of ex-military university, just different different groups banding together to try to survive and hide, and maybe a few straggler survivors that they encounter along the way. And that's it. That's it for all of the world, so far as we know, from our perspective in Falling Skies. So the um, as the story progresses, you actually come across several different... Uh, alien types and most of them they take the they take the halo kind of approach where an invading alien army isn't just that alien but it's all it's like an alliance of aliens who have decided to like conquer and um but then like you 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 come to find out some of them are kind of under duress they're not really wanting to be a part of this scheme and um and the humans find a way to turn them against the aliens then we find there is other alien alliances in existence and it all comes you know some people were a little disappointed with the end uh and i and and in fact um you know what not going to cover that uh just now in this podcast (laughs) Hmm, because you need to watch it sometime we will discuss uh, the end of <laughs> so so Steven Spielberg hit it out of the park. It had what it Fiennes, was that the name of the, the main guy? Was he the guy what? in Luther? Anyways. No Wiley? Um the actor? What who was uh we had we had the guy from Remember the Titans was like the second in command at Falling Skies. You know, the the white guy with the country accent, you know, the Yeah. Um and then we have jo- Joseph Fiennes, I think. Maybe. What? Noah Wiley was Tom. Noah Wiley. Okay. I get As... those guys confused sometimes. <laughs> they look the same, don't they? Sure. <laughs> Wait, is this part of your defense? Because. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so, okay. So, um, I think we, we can all just... Uh, Put this behind us. Well, I wait. You. Hold on. I thought it was pretty. I mean, it was great. Don't get me wrong. I think Falling Skies was amazing, especially the first season. First season was phenomenal. But wasn't there a storyline involving like an alien child that was a little odd? Like, if we could remove that, it would be better. I like without throwing in too many spoilers. I'm just gonna be no, like, spoil Listen. away. I I want to know what, what I mean, you found objectionable I, about that. It's story been a while like. since I watched it, but but they they had an alien, a half alien child, in yeah. the series, and when she was the focus, it kind of kind of threw it off a little bit. What, um, were, was it half alien or fully alien? I I'm not remembering the half alien aspect of it. Um, let's see. I'm just, well, like I said, I'm, I'm reading the, the summaries cause it's been a while. I just, I have these vague memories of her. You Googled criticisms of falling skies, didn't you? No, <laughs> no. I was just trying to confirm that That's I wasn't getting this show mixed up with another show, but that would be kind of funny to Google criticisms of falling skies. <laughs> yeah. Look, I think falling skies, except for the half alien child little thing, I thought falling skies was really good. I mean, there was some, every show has their moments where you're like, what? Like, like the moment when two of the characters remember Tom and another character like fought over a snake or okay. something. Okay. And that, yeah. That, 
there's like this <laughs> this ridiculously long fist fight. Like I'm talking maybe seven minutes long of just a fist wow. fight, and it was so ridiculous. They were like hitting each other with crowbars and stuff like things that That's would like normally a captain kill. kirk fight or something yes oh my gosh i know exactly what you're talking there's this one yes um yeah no i mean it was great i really liked falling skies and i felt like that that first season especially the way they portrayed those aliens oh my gosh like terrifying it terrifies you to hear, hear the sound they make, this mm, kind of sound they make as they're walking and stuff. It is terrifying. Um, they nailed that. But I don't, I, I still wouldn't put it over Battlestar. I felt like Battlestar had a more intricate plot in some ways, but, but Falling Skies really did nail the survival aspect and terror you know what Falling Skies didn't mean to drive two. it forward is a whole mess of supernatural occurrences. <laughs> That's a Battlestar gig, by the dig, by the way. <laughs> well, yes, um, yes, there, there was. I, I can't disagree that that did play a role. But I love the interplay of the mythology and the mystery. You know, wondering how it was going to turn out. Well, well, I think uh, something important to take into note, take into consideration here, is the people. What the people have said. Uh, the Metascore for <laughs> or the the IMDb rating for oh. these is Falling Skies got a seven point two, Battlestar got an eight point seven, and Firefly got a nine point oh. <gasps> Sorry, oh. guys. Uh, <laughs> Sean, I know IMDb. that you're experienced with bots. <laughs> And before <laughs> I checked Metascore, before you you uh, looked, and it was totally uh -huh. different. <laughs> oh, I sent out my bots, <laughs> my rating bots. Oh, my gosh. Well, and it's much easier to give a very high rating to something with only one season. Oh, wait, whose side are you on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Battlestar's side. That's, so yes. say we all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. Uh, Firefly does have more ratings than the other ones too. So that yeah, there's like a hundred thousand more than Battlestar. So that that's my bots. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right. So that is a lot more ratings. So if you're listening to this and you want to weigh in, uh, go ahead and put in the comments what is the greatest post-apocalyptic TV show of all time, and why is it Falling Skies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i bet we're gonna get some interesting responses like there's so many shows yeah yeah and next time we'll have to do movies yeah <laughs> that'll be fun yeah i will fight you for mad max so <laughs> yeah well, oh man <laughs> i'm gonna yeah. prepare a legal defense of <laughs> whatever movie i chose <laughs> children of yeah, right <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's get into our uh, our main topics. We each picked a topic as we have done for the last uh, few episodes, and uh, we're going to talk about those now. Stephanie, why don't you go ahead and start out with yours? What do you got for us this week? Sure. Um, well, my main topic is the uh, is about The Walking Dead coming back. Um, the Walking Dead World Beyond just premiered this last Sunday. And then this coming Sunday, Fear the Walking Dead returns. What? And last Sunday, we also finally saw the sort of finale of The Walking Dead season 10. Oh, okay. It, it was the finale that they didn't air because they weren't read, didn't have it quite finished yet for the pandemic, uh, before the pandemic shut everything down. But now they're tacking on an additional six episodes to the season that are coming out in 2021. So I'm it's so not confused. really the finale. Yeah. yeah. But um, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about World Beyond. So Walking Dead, the World Beyond, um, the very first episode was really good. It was better than I expected. I, I thought it was just going to be, well, it was, it is mostly about teens um, dealing with the new world. It takes place 10 years after um, the apocalypse starts, which puts it about on par 
with where The Walking Dead is right now and a little bit ahead of fear. It um, but it was a lot. It, it ended up being a lot better than I expected. It connects a little bit, well, quite a bit with the story of what happened with Rick, which is going to be revealed more in the upcoming movies. We last we saw him on The Walking Dead. He was taken away in a helicopter that had one a very specific symbol on the side, which was also the focus of one episode in Fear the Walking Dead. Well, we learn in the first episode of World Beyond that we're dealing with a society that um, is working with the civic Republic, which turns out to be the name of the group behind the, that icon. Um, We don't learn much about it, about that group. Um, They're still very mysterious, but they are um, basically the um, one of the leading characters. Her dad is a scientist who went off to work with the group the civic Republic. And he has sent some messages that indicate he's in danger and that things aren't what they seem. And so this group of kids has been staying in a society that it's kind of like Alexandria was before Rick and the company came because it's a very well functioning society. They have lots of food, electricity. They they're surrounded by strong walls. They've managed to keep themselves safe and keep functioning. And they have an alliance with the civic Republic and another group. So, um, one of the kids, um, want, well, actually two of the kids, there, there's two daughters whose dad is the scientist who's in danger okay. and they decide that they're going to set off, set out to find him and try to help him after he sent them a message. And they're very interesting characters. It turned out to be more, um, more interesting than I had expected. And then there are two yeah. other characters that head off with them two um two teen guys and then there is also an older couple but still young adults who are trying who also leave to try to find them so you know it sounds like oh this is just another storyline of people trekking through the zombie apocalypse and it is but it's going to tell us a lot more about these other governments that are functioning that we don't learn about much in the walking dead storyline but they've managed to keep themselves afloat. And, um, and these kids are actually very interesting to me. You know, um, they have, um, I think that they're going to be, um, it's going to be interesting to see how they adjust, you know, they've been training for this because they weren't unaware of the apocalypse on the other side, but this is their first time on their own dealing with it by themselves. So I think it's uh, I liked it. I liked the first episode there. There was a part at the very end that I didn't like because I felt it took away a little bit of the intrigue, you know, the kind of like I like it when bad characters have like lots of shades of gray and it kind of took that away. But Mm -hmm. um, I can overlook that. And I think it's going to be a pretty interesting series. I'm very interested to see what happens next. Would you, uh, I know Derek, you watched it with me. What did, what did you think? Do you think I'm on, I'm right in my assessment? You agree? Yeah, I did. I, I watched it and I was very surprised. I really thought that this was going to be another young adult, very inside the box, kind of a formulaic mm-hmm. thing that I've come to expect uh, from let's just say young adult programming. And I, and that first episode really got me thinking that it's not going to be like that. Yeah. And that they are going to weave a story that is perhaps better told than fear the walking dead or maybe even the walking dead. I, I am hopeful for this series and I wasn't going in. So, you know, let that tell you something about how I feel about it. I, the, the walking dead as a franchise has felt a little stale with age, if I'm g- going to be honest. And um, and so that kind of colors my ex- expectations. This didn't feel stale. I like the mysteries. I like the way it's set up. And I, I think they're going to be able to tell a story that isn't too tied down by the current mythology in Walking Dead, which mm-hmm. is another thing I think is, is kind of 
holding it back at this moment. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree on, and your assessment of walking dead, like it, walking dead was groundbreaking, you know, um, presenting zombies in a television series in a way we hadn't seen before. So well done. It, it had gotten to feeling kind of stale. It, um, I feel like it's kind of picked up in some ways, you know, the last couple oh, yeah. seasons Absolutely. quite a bit. And I really love Negan as a character and all his, how he's evolved. But, um, I mean, you know, last season there were some questionable decisions. Some of the characters made that I was like, they wouldn't really do this because they're better at surviving now. But, um, it's definitely picked up, but yeah, this was a very, I agree with you. This was a very fresh look on the genre and the universe. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Sean, did you, did you catch the, um, the world, what's it called? World, world beyond world beyond. No, I didn't. No, I, I, uh, I don't know. I, I guess like it, it's like you were saying where, you know, you kind of lost, um, the walking dead in the last couple of seasons. And I, now that you say that the last few seasons have gotten better, I, I'm kind of intrigued to get back into it. Cause I gave up on it. I don't know, season four, somewhere around there. What I was guess. happening in the plot when you gave up? Oh man, I don't even remember. That was years <laughs> ago. Um, I just, it, it just seems so like the same thing every, mm-hmm. you know, where there's this, you know, Rick saves the day every, every time. <laughs> um, I think it was when they were in the prison, when they first got to the prison mm. and, um, yeah, I think that's probably right, right and, around where it was. And Rick was telling his only son not to carry a gun. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Coral, oh I, I might have rage quit the series at that moment as well. Yeah. Although I do have to say that uh, Rick becoming a gardener at the prison while the world is falling down around him was something I really related to when 2020 first started going bad and I was trying to learn how to garden just to <laughs> avoid everything. I was like, eh, I'm kind of like Garden now. like Rick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, I didn't watch it. I probably will. Um, and uh, I actually, on our favorite TV show post, I actually put Fear the Walking Dead on my honorable mentions without putting The Walking Dead on there just because... You know, I've watched Classic all of Fear of the Walking Dead. Yeah. Oh, so you've stayed up with, you've stayed caught up on Fear. Yeah. Um, well, now that I think about it, maybe I haven't watched the last, how many, how many seasons are there? Um, uh, that is a good question. you on the question. spot here. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to Google that. Three. What's your guess, Sean? Three. I, well, I think I've watched two. So yeah, I might not be as far uh, along as I thought. Ah. Uh, Five. Five. Holy oh, I'm way, cow. I'm way behind. Five. Yeah, we're all behind. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. But I and, liked it um, the first couple season seasons. Season six is actually the one that's starting. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you probably haven't come to the uh, the weird episode. Oh. You'll know when you get there because it is <laughs> weird. <sighs> and then it just, yeah. Anyway, it took a turn at one point that made me sad and oh. I'm very disappointed in is all I'm going to say. <laughs> But don't let that stop you from watching it, you know. Well, I, my list is so long that it, it, I don't know when I'll get to it. So, we'll, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally relate to that. <laughs> I actually, I think Falling Skies might be. It might have moved up a couple notches mm-hmm. on my on my list now. Yes. So, <laughs> you do need to get. It is good. You need to give that a try. Yeah, I you're do. gonna be. You're gonna really like it. I don't know what oh. it was. I, I I watched the first episode and I just was like. Uh, hmm. I don't know. I just didn't watch anymore. I don't know. Is the aliens? I don't know. Do you like alien shows? Yeah, I actually do. Um, hmm. <laughs> District Nine is an amazing show. Oh, the yeah. amazing movie. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. yeah, I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, I didn't know um, much about the apartheid uh, connection, but as a stand standalone, I should know that history. Uh, I guess it's important <laughs> history, but. Um, but the movie as a standalone, even if it's not an allegory for a, a real event, is is really fascinating for the idea of what if aliens were refugees on Earth. All right. Well, uh, for my topic this time, I wanted to talk about a book that I received. Um, it's a survival book. I have it right here. And it's called Survival Tips, Tricks, and Traps. Nice. Um, Very nice looking cover. Yeah. It's, it's actually, it's pretty cool. It's like a... Uh, like a rubberized, I guess you could say, 
like it's it's made extra durable. Uh, you know, oh, so you nice. can throw it in your bag or something like that. Yeah. Nice. And from what I gather from this, I, I read the, the whole thing and I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, I I don't know how else to say it. It's it's just something that I wasn't expecting uh, because it's it's kind of a, a like a low budget, you know, uh, self-published thing. And the person who uh, contacted me on Twitter and asked me if I review books and I said, sure, you know, I, I love reading books. Uh, so they sent me this book. And I, I skimmed through it at first, and I was kind of taken by it. There's a lot of really precise and concise um, uh, tips in here. I mean, exactly like it says, tips, tricks, and traps. I mean, there's not a story where it tells, you know, the background of, you know, the history of trapping or anything like that, you know, which would be kind of cool, I think, actually. But it's <laughs> not for this book. You know, this book is is something you carry in your bag. Look, it's a, it's a soft cover. You can roll it up, throw it in your bag, mm. and it's something that you would use if you ever got into a, a situation where you need it. Hmm. And it's not just like survival, like bushcrafting or anything like that. It's practical stuff. Um, there's everything I kind of show, I don't know if this can be seen very well, but everything is broken down into these little categories, you know, little drawings here, here and there, um, nice. photos here and there. I mean, it's, it's a, it's not, there's not a lot of fluff, I think is the big, the best way to say mm. it. Um, so anyway, this, so this is written by Wanda, I think it's pronounced Pride, maybe Pride. It looks, it's kind of spelled like Friday. So, and then her husband, William, um, and they wrote this together. She told me the whole kind of backstory on, on how they wrote the book, why they wrote the book. And it's, it's a really fascinating story. I'm going to write up a, a, a review on the book itself and mm -hmm. also a story of the authors huh. because it it's really fascinating um she she kind of grew up in the blue ridge mountains which actually isn't too far from me it's on the east side of georgia and it's um it, it's like a it's a notorious area that's you know kind of one of the last bastions of of just complete um you know nothing out there and you know and hmm. you can like a lot of people go out there just to go camping and things like that, but it's, it's a really great cool. area. And so she grew up in there, that area. And she talks about how she grew up at one point off grid, completely off grid. Huh. And she had, she raised her children, you know, off grid. And, wow. and it's, it's a, she has a fascinating story. And, you know, in my review that I'm, it's not on the site yet, but it will be by the time this comes out. Uh, I'm going to write about kind of a two parter. It's going to be my review of the book my honest review of, of what I think, how practical this book is, and also her story, because I think her story is fascinating. <clears throat> hmm. Now, getting to the, the, the biggest part, I think, of that story is her husband died just before this book was published. Oh, I mean, literally. So sad. Yeah, it's really sad. Um, he died in February of 2020, and this was published in, in March. So wow. it was kind of like <sighs> he wrote everything, you know, and he got his part in there. And then he passed away. So I asked her what happened and she told me the whole story. I was a little, you know, I didn't know how appropriate it was to ask her what exactly happened with her husband because um, she doesn't really talk about it anywhere. I follow her on Twitter, like I said, and, mm. and uh, she's an interesting person, but she she never really talked about it. So I said, you know, if you don't want to answer that, don't worry about it. I understand. Well, she, she told me the whole story. And it's uh, a lot of it is, um, it's a really sad story, but it, it kind of circles around uh, his life and he, he had a really hard life and he turned to substance abuse. And then he, at one point, basically just, he went out in the woods and kind of just gave up. And, um, and she, she, the way she oh, says wow. it, that he, um, I'm, br I'm bringing down this whole show. I'm sorry, but yeah, she, she talks about how he went out there and, and just kind of ran himself to death. Uh, you know, he was so dedicated to survival and everything, you know, that he just, I don't know, he just gave up. And I, I think it's, it, there's more to it than that. I, I don't want to, you know, I don't know, talk, yeah. talk too much about that here, but yeah, yeah, I, I have questions, but I don't know what's appropriate. Um, yeah, exactly. Can I, can I know, like, do you feel like it's okay to, to say what, what it was the substance? Well, she doesn't really mention uh -huh. that. Okay. She just says that he, he, he was born without a left hand. And he had um, a lot of, he was bullied a lot for that. And so oh she says gosh. that he was, um, he was actually a tree trimmer, a one-handed tree trimmer, she says. Wow. No and way. so he he tried, like he tried all these different things to really make it. 
And this was his biggest passion was writing about survival and wow. writing, writing about bushcrafting. You know, there's a section on bush, bushcrafting. Um, but I, I think, I guess what I want to say is the, the one of the takeaways I have from this is that it's like, this is written by a guy and his wife, but you can tell that the parts where he wrote um, were very like, he knows what it's like. Like he knows mm. what it means to survive, you know, and they both do, you know, she was, she lived off grid. Like they, this isn't just someone who looked this stuff up on, on, mm -hmm. you know, in the library and encyclopedias and stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. this is people who lived it. And I was not expecting to love this book as much as I did. I mean, not only just because that story is fascinating, mm -hmm. but it's great. I mean, here, I got to show you this in the back of the book, there's about 20 or 30 pages that just say Firestarter. I don't know if you <gasps> can see that. It's pretty bright. Oh, huh? wow. I love and that. So so there's about 20 or 30 pages that are just there in case you need to start a fire, you know, and use the, the pages that for that without so actually neat. taking, you know, useful stuff out of the book. I mean, there's a periodic table of elements. Wow. Nice. There's uh, just tons of these, these really great, um, uh, what, what's wow. that, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like a, you know, drawings, basically, like, like creative, illustrations. Uses of the space. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, you, you don't want to take a library with you. Yeah. You yeah. need one book that includes the basics. You know, like, mm -hmm. there, there's probably a ruler in there. Uh, you yeah. Know, the fire starter. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, smart. It's, it's so practical. It's so... There, there's even Morse code. There's, wow, there's, really? So there's maritime warnings in case you're, you know, near a, a, a coast. There's hand signals, body signals, international distress signals, trapping. I mean, it's like they really thought about what um, she said it took years for them to get to the point where, you, where basically they wrote the story, then they went back and they made it more concise. Mm. And th their goal, of course, was to make it this small, you know, how to get all that into this. Mm -hmm. this so there's no fluff. There's no, it's just, you know, it's like, do this, do this. Awesome. This is how you do this. This is how you solve this problem. That's it. Oh, that's nice. great. I really yeah. want the book now. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, and so I'm going to write the, um, the story of that and, and kind of put the answers to all her questions in, or the answers that she gave me to my questions in mm -hmm. there and, uh, and tell that tragic story, which I think is, um, it's tragic, of course, but I think it's still one of those things that uh, she feels, I feel like she's kind of um, growing from that, I guess, which is all we can really do, you know? Yeah. From yeah. something like that. So yeah, look for that on the site. Definitely. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, uh, you know, subscribe to the email list, um, to get notifications on all of our new stories, but, um, but we'll try to make sure because some people are just listening to the podcast. We'll try yeah, to make yeah. sure and let everybody know once that article's up yeah. in a uh, future podcast so that people who are interested in that tale, uh, and this book, the book's called, Tips, it's tricks, so, survival and trip, survival tips, tricks, and traps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. We had, we do have an audio version, and uh, I'm holding up this. <laughs> but we'll put a. <laughs> when I do the article itself, I'll have pictures of all this stuff in there too. So. Yeah. If you can't see it, uh, let me describe it as not being a tome. It is. It is not near. It, it's not going to weigh you down too much. Mm -hmm. Throw it in your bug out bag. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's it's not tiny either. It's 116 pages before you get to the fire starter pages. So it's probably 140 pages or so, somewhere around there. Solid. Yeah. So that was my, uh, that was my contribution to this. <laughs> and again, like I said, I will have that written up. Uh, so look for that on the site. It'll, I'm 99% sure it'll be done by the time this podcast comes out. Oh. So, uh, oh, so Derek, you had a topic as well. What was your topic this week? Yeah, I have uh, two quick topics. One is an update. Snowpiercer, which we all three loved. Yeah. yeah. I saw that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, woohoo. <laughs> that, that may end up at the top of a lot of uh, our, a lot of lists, including mine. I mean, I don't know. I, I really love Falling Skies, but Snowpiercer had a strong first season. It really mm. did. Um, really did. They, uh, in fact, the first season didn't even end that long ago. I want to say it ended in like March. And they are already showing a sneak peek at season two and yeah. that comes out on Thursday. 
So I wanted to let everybody know, if you're a Snowpiercer fan, there is a New York Comic Con panel that's going to be online. And it is Thursday at, if you're Central Standard Time, it's at 5.20. So, you know, convert that to whatever you need to. But um, there is a link. We have, um, you know, basically it's going to, you can watch it on YouTube. And I think that's going to be how they're going to be accepting questions. That's just my guess hmm. since they're really pushing this online aspect to it. The yeah, that's keep, exciting. Yeah, that's that's nice. But, you know, a panel can just be like the, the B-roll actors. <laughs> that's not this panel. This panel has lead character. It has five people. And that's that's one thing I wanted to ask you guys about. But but I'll get to that. Five people on the panel. One of them, the lead character, Jennifer Connelly. Jennifer Connelly. Um, David Diggs, I believe that's how you say that first name. Uh, the, uh, the other lead character, I guess you could call him. Um, that's David Diggs. David Diggs. The, yeah, yeah. Okay, then character we have... Character names escape me. Then we have Sean Bean, who is not a lead character yet, but he is. He's cast as a lead character, so we can at least... Um, he just appeared at the end of season one. He is Mr. Uh, well, he is, um, I'm like, I'm like, it just, it feels like it just ended. So I was hesitant to reveal this, but I guess everybody knows. Yeah. Sean everybody Bean, knows. Yeah. It's been advertised a lot. Yeah. Sean Bean is Willy Wonka, not Willy Wonka. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, That's okay. a whole different Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> whole whole different conversation. He is um what are we calling him? Mr. Gosh, uh, it's gonna, only been a few months <laughs> since we watched this <laughs> Mr. TV Wilford. series. Mr. Mr. Wilford. Wilford. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's Not been a while. It's okay. I can't remember names. Um Layton is David Diggs character okay. who was my yes. favorite character last season. Yeah. So I'm super excited he's going to be on that panel. And Sean okay. Bean, wow. So you have Leighton, Jennifer Connelly, and um, Mr. Wilford, two, three huge characters. Then we also have the showrunner, oh. Graham Manson. And so those are like those are four that you expect if they're just talk, taking the top of the top. But there's one other person on the panel, uh, Rowan Blanchard. She, um, if memory serves, played a fairly minor role in season one so i'm wondering if this panel mm. the way they chose the panel is giving us a hint that she's going to be a much bigger uh part of of the show in season two interesting which one was she what what uh what was her name again blanchard, blanchard Rowan, you said yes oh oh Alexandra. she was jennifer Conley's daughter that's right. On oh, that very right. last episode. Yeah, she had the really short hair. Oh, that's who that is. Okay, I had it oh. confused. I thought it was somebody in the pleasure train or whatever they call that. Mm. Oh, no. Yeah, they oh, just yeah. showed her for a second right at the end there. That last She episode. is going to be huge, I'm sure. Wow. Yeah, what are they going to reveal? I mean, you have half of that panel is all untold stories. So mm -hmm. I want to know yeah. how, how are they supposed to answer questions without <laughs> spoiling their season? Right. Yeah. It, uh, it'll be like a press conference. They'll just basically <laughs> say, we can't, I'm sorry, we can't divulge that information right now. <laughs> yes. No comment. <laughs> it'd be like the head coaches. We got to play yeah. harder defense, give 110%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that'll be it. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So that's it. 520 Central Standard Time on Thursday. Um, there is a um, there in the description on the calendar is the link to the YouTube. And nice. how do you get there? I don't know. So hopefully you can figure that out <laughs> uh, because right now I'm having trouble getting that to work. Huh. The other thing. Um, okay, so that was that was one announcement, Snowpiercer. The other thing I wanted to chat about, and I haven't brought this up, we haven't discussed this pre-show, hmm. um, uh -oh. but I know that Sean and myself are playing Wasteland 3, which just came mm. out. Uh, I just added up my hours on, I'm playing it all on, uh, all on Twitch. It's going to be on YouTube eventually as a Let's Play. And 
I have I am 18 hours in, which is a super slow play. It's probably closer to 13 normal gamer mm-hmm. hours. Uh, about how far are, along are you, Sean? I'm I'm a little bit less than that. I'm probably about uh, 10 or 12. I would say into it. Hmm. Uh, preliminary thoughts. Uh. I, you know, I'm a big fan, of course, of the first one, like the biggest fan ever, <laughs> like ridiculous, embarrassing. <laughs> and uh, Wasteland 2, I I don't know if it was one of those things where it was like nostalgia was bigger than, you know, the actual game. So I didn't really get into it. But then Wasteland 3, from what I've played so far, I, I like it more than 2, definitely. I think it's really well done. I think that mm-hmm. the... Uh, just all the you know the the usual the graphics the storyline the uh the dialogue i mean everything is voiced um it it in it it i don't know it grabs me it brings me in you know it's something that i want to keep playing um the only thing stopping me is that i have to play on the xbox in my living room and i have a family and you know <laughs> they can't hear all the language that goes on <laughs> so it has to be one of those when the kids are in bed you know and um it, so it's something that it's definitely grabbed me. I enjoy it a lot. It's probably not my favorite game of all time just because of, um, I don't know, like, I guess the angle, it sounds really petty, but the, you know, I'm not a huge fan of that anymore. I mean, I grew up with mm. the three quarter top angle, um, you know, Baldur's Gate and all the Forgotten Realms games and stuff like that. I love that. But I think now I want to play more of like a first person you know, I, that's mm. why I love stuff like Fallout 4. Fallout 4 is, it's like probably one or two or three, like right up in this top three of my all-time games. Um, yes. Yeah. So, it, it's so underrated. Most people are yeah. saying that Fallout 4 is not great. And oh, I, I don't understand that sentiment. Yeah. I mean, negative comments seem to always kind of rise to the top on anything. <laughs> so, so you know, you'll hear that more often. Um, the 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 ones who enjoy the game are at home playing it. So that's, <laughs> that's usually <laughs> that how that goes. <laughs> so yeah, I, I would say it's, it's not as good as, as fallout four, but I, I don't know. I'm really enjoying it, but again, I'm not that far into it. 12 hours is not that, you know, that far into it. I don't know what the, the kind of projected hour uh, until you beat the game is supposed to be like, is I, it, a, it's probably over a hundred hours. I don't, I, well, I don't think it's over a hundred. I think I oh, want to okay. say it's still long. It's long for, uh, for really any any kind of game because like you know the the fallout games generally you're looking at 35 to 40 hours mm, yeah. um, so uh this is closer to 60 according to ign like 60 to oh, 80 wow. uh i think is how much d- dialogue has been recorded um mm. so if you're talking to everybody you're already getting up there yeah. um yeah, I I would I would concur. the The view does not always do it for me. You know, there's a lot of times I want to look over someplace else and like yeah. you, you know, because one one aspect of the gameplay is positioning your guys before a fight starts out and sneaking around. And neither of those two things are things I feel comfortable doing. Um, yeah. Oftentimes, mm-hmm. I'm trying to like inch up to a group, and one of my group members just kind of you know, haphazardly walks into their line of sight, you know, or I'm not understanding landmine or something drives me crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, So, so there is some aspect of that. Um, I like how, you know, and I noticed they did this in wasteland two as well. They immediately force you to choose between two good options. And it's just kind of like a baby on the railroad tracks, kind of a situation where you have to decide who, Mm. who has to die yeah, and yeah. um uh that that actually happened in in you know in two situations i just wanted to bring up since they're early in the game i think it's good to talk about them sean did you get a radio call where you had to like there was like a power armor uh, that was getting stolen and um no okay no, I didn't so get you haven't to got yet. to that part yet um Another another crisis that they have you do is is between Little Vegas. Have you been dealing with Little Vegas? No, I actually just got to that part where I have to go meet Farron Brigo in Little Vegas. Okay, 
All right. Well, then, um, then neither of those two choices uh, have come to you yet. But I, I will say, yeah, you can't you can't play this with your kids. You can't, yeah. um, you know, have your parents around uh, if, <laughs> if that's what that's your situation. But um, I remember on the on the live stream, I was just playing as normal and I go into this brothel and start talking to people and it gets really uh, adult really fast. Hmm. And I noticed that my like live stream viewers went from four to two, <laughs> you know, like immediately oh, when it got funny. dirty. So, you know, some people weren't, weren't like, expecting what is that. This? But I, I labeled the live stream as adult as yeah. I do label this video here. So, um, buyer beware. <laughs> it's a, uh, no, but I'm, I'm really loving it. Uh, I, it's kind of a drag that I've got to stream it when I want to play because there's a lot of times when I want to, I'm just I'm just itching to play. The strategy element is strong. Mm. The choices are are mostly difficult. The uh, item scarcity is working right now at my yeah. guilt at, at my um, difficulty level. Yeah. So uh, I just I want to get back into it. I kind of want to play right now. <laughs> I've thought a lot about when I play. You know, I've watched your streams. I actually didn't watch the last couple because I didn't want to spoil anything. But I, uh, I was watching your streams and I was when I'm playing, I'm thinking I couldn't do this and stream at the same time because I would feel like someone's watching over my shoulder. And when I'm sitting, sitting there going through when I'm sitting there going through all of my, um, you know, items like meticulously going through each thing and going, OK, do I want to give this guy this or like no one wants to watch that. So I would I, I would feel like I couldn't <laughs> do that on stream that I would, you know, item management that I would have to do that off stream. So, I mean, more power to you, you know, streaming <laughs> it like that, I think. Oh, yeah. They, they'll watch me stare at a piece of armor for five minutes deciding, you know, which one oh, I gosh. want to modify. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that's and that's why I'm so. I'm, I'm not very far along in the game, but uh, and why and why I'm averaging 1.2 live viewers right now. <laughs> so, so if you want to get in early and uh, <laughs> <That's your chance. laughs> beat, the, beat the crowds, <laughs> subscribe to our Twitch channel. Yeah, yeah I, I think uh, also, you know, you're mentioning about the I mean, just the RPG elements of it, I think are done really well. Um, it's, it's simple. Yeah. It's, you know, what you would expect. They're not trying to reinvent the wheel with it. And you have the scarcity of ammo. Like you said, that was always a, a staple of the, of the whole series, you know, in Wasteland one, hmm. boy, you know, you had to really scavenge for that ammo. And I love that. I think that's a really great, uh, a great kind of carryover. And, um, you know, the RPG elements, the, the progression of it, I love turn-based combat. Uh, I played yeah, a lot of the Shadow Run games that were. Did you play the Shadow Run games that were turn based? I no, I didn't. They're, they were probably, I don't know, six, seven years ago they came out. Mm. Um, I love that kind of stuff. Um, so I, you know, I, I complain about the the view, but I really love the the RPG and the turn based <laughs> combat. So it's it's like you said. I I actually want to go play it right now too. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're, we're not ruling out the possibility of a, a co-op campaign someday in the future. Oh, yeah. that'd be fun. I just need to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with that, we are, we are just about out of time. So is, um, is there anything we, that was on the list for us to talk about? Um, the only other thing was just mentioning to everyone that, uh, Dune, the movie has been delayed. Uh, we talked about it in a previous podcast. I'll just quickly say it has now been delayed until 2021. It's sad. 2020 strikes again. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, you have to say you kind of knew this was going to happen when they said it was right. going to release in October. It's like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> really? Or December. It, it was December. That's what it was. December. <laughs> yeah. It's like you you realize that's only a couple months away, right? And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's very hopeful of them. <laughs> but I look forward to it anyway. All right. So I think that'll do it for this episode. Uh you guys have anything else you wanted to add? That's all from me. Yeah. That's all. I'll be watching that Snowpiercer panel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That'll Thursday. be exciting. Uh yeah. Oh, and and just uh just as an aside, um, uh, Stephanie and I are testing out a new laser tag variant on Friday that is a battle royale. 
uh, somehow. So oh, nice. we'll uh, we'll we'll give a little review of that next time. Battle Royals, by the way, are all post-apocalyptic in my mind because I am always imagining. It doesn't matter if I'm playing Fortnite or any of the other battle royals. I imagine that I'm in Hunger Games and that that is the plot of my situation in that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, anything is post-apocalyptic if you just think hard enough. If you imagine and dream. If you dream. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the tagline of this episode. Yes. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, thanks for joining us. Check out the site, postapocalypticmedia.com, where we have... All of our, our social media is on there. We also have a calendar on the sidebar on the right side uh, toward the bottom. If you click on a on any story, it'll tell it'll give the um, the calendar there. And that calendar take uh, keeps track of upcoming movies, TV shows, things like that. Anything yep. that you might be interested in. Um, and then we have, like I said, social media: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the good ones. Uh, so yeah, check that out. Follow us there. Subscribe to our YouTube channel where we're going to have a lot more videos coming up. Our Twitch channel, we're going to do a lot more streaming, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) it's going to be a lot of fun. So stick with us through all that, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, y'all.